previously on the district. The only reason that I'm here at all is because I wanted to be with you. Mr. Mayor, who's Pumpkin? Who's that on the tape? The tape is a fraud. What the hell is Pumpkin? Does that sound like me? Yes, it does sound like you on the tape. That's the problem. I'm Irma Coleman, Pablito's sister. I have custody. You have temporary custody. You're his aunt, I'm his aunt. You don't have a greater right than I. It's a subpoena to appear before the adoption board. Hello, where are you? Ask him for a delay. Well, this is exactly what we're talking about. Your inability to parent this child. I can't blow this one, Chief. No, that's not going to happen, Ella. Mr. Dawson, what's the problem? There's somebody in my apartment. One B. First door on the left. All right, ma'am, just stay here. Stay calm. Stay calm, ma'am. Stay calm. Can you take the kitchen out, take a look at that. What happened? What do we have here? No, no, no. Come back. What's this? Did you find anybody? No. It was just a mouse. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a mouse. I heard them come in. I heard them come in through the back. I'll show you. That's you playing the blind woman? Yeah. Oh, well, turn it off. That's enough. I should have been in on this. Why is that? As head of internal affairs, I should have been involved. It's my turf. Yeah, six weeks ago, I wanted a plan from you. What did I get? I get a memo back about proper procedure. It takes time, sir. Is that the best you can do, Captain? Eight sting operations were conducted in the last four days. We have evidence of misconduct by four officers sent to the crime scenes. Everything from burglary to obstruction of justice. Now, these operations have bigger implications than just busting several cops. Cops? You calling these guys cops? They're robbing a blind woman. I mean, they're nothing but thugs. Now, I want them arrested. You bring them in the front door of this building. I want them interrogated like any other perp. Do you have that, Captain? Yes, sir. You gotta calm down, Chief. Looks like somebody robbed his granny. How'd you know? Know what? Mounted a sting for crooked cops. What, robbing grannies? Almost. Anybody fall for it? Too many. Anybody from this district? Barrett, Dawson, Baldwin, and Sandelson. Dawson? Yeah. Ella, your lawyer called. The adoption board's rescheduled your hearing for the end of this week. Thought I'd get to his birthday before that happened. Ella, come on. You can't lose. They're not going to hand the child over to the family of his mother's murderer. It's not going to happen. Really? I keep thinking about a certain famous football player's case. Hey, Ella, I was like, going to ask you, um, is Ricky into superheroes? What? I want to hook him up with a birthday present. Oh, uh, yes, Spider-Man, I think. Right. Where they have these claymation action figures, right, where you can mold them and then you can break them no. apart. No clay in my apartment. This guy obviously does not have children. No, no, you just put paper down on the floor. I read it's good to give kids cross-gender toys. What, like a doll or something? Yeah, what would be wrong with that? For a little guy, a doll. You are so homophobic. You what? know that, McGregor? Look, you're such a... Look! 
he may be gone by Saturday. I don't want to hear any more about his birthday until I know he's mine. No comments. This way. I think it's a good idea to humiliate cops. They're not cops, Joe. They're criminals. They stopped being cops the moment they committed a crime. What about the cameras? Now, you see me out there taking any bows? Now, this is not a proud moment. No, but by doing this, you paint this entire department with the same brush. You barely had a good word to say about this force since the first day you came here. And it's your job, Deputy Chief, to give me something good to say. Instead of trying to make a point on... On behalf of a bunch of thieves. Sir? Yeah, I thought I told you to arrest everyone. Where's Dawson? Dawson? Look, I saw that tape. He objected to the theft. Really? He reported? No. He's a good cop. He was there as backup. Dawson saw Barrett committing a crime. He said nothing. That's not a good cop. Hell, that's not even a good citizen. How do we know he didn't divide the take when he got outside? Now, Joe. Dawson took the same oath we all did to faithfully discharge the duties of this office. That makes him a liar and a crook. Lock him up. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. There will be no more perp walks. I will arrest Dawson myself. Either we install soundproofing or you're going to have to control your temper. Hello. We are talking about crooked cops, the lowest of the low. You're not talking, you're shouting. It's safe to come in? Well, you're in. Hello, let's do a comp stab with the commanders. So, you in the mood for some bad news? Absolutely. Fidel Castro. Fidel does not want to stay within the federal circle. Fidel wants to be among the people. The Drummond Hotel. Which puts him in your jurisdiction. Good for him. All right, we'll double the manpower, make it safe for him. Except he's bringing with him a certain Admiral Zadillo, the Cuban Navy. Now, it turns out Zadillo's the guy who ordered his ships to fire on the Cuban exile rescue flotilla. According to the Miami Herald, the Cuban exile community's not too happy. They're organizing a massive protest. It's our beat, Chief. The mayor would like us to handle this without any federal assistance. Shall we have a police force that can deal with anything that's thrown at it? We'll deal with it. It could get violent. We're on it. Great. Long live Fidel. At least until he gets out of our town. <laughs> oh, um, the Temple School rescue, the mayor would like to do something. I'm going to make Temple a detective. Hey, how about a ceremony with the mayor, a little press? No, I don't think he'd like that. It's not his style. All right, but, you know, it might help level things out after this little parade this morning. All right, wait a minute. You think there's a disgrace in arresting crooked cops? You're shouting again. Officer Dawson. What's up, Chief? I'll need you to turn over your service weapon. What? Your ID, badge, and your shield. Wait a minute. You, you arresting me? If you have keys to a vehicle or a locker, I'll take those now, too. Come on, Chief. I didn't take anything. Officers will be stopping by your home to get your other weapons and any property belonging to the Metropolitan Police Department. I don't believe this. Here you go. Oh. 
I'm gonna need to cuff you now. Now you're doing Mangan's dirty work for him, huh? This morning, six police officers, six of our fellow officers, were arrested and charged with burglary. Now, I believe that we have a system in place where that could have been identified and it could have been stopped. And until it is, all of our good work goes for naught because we are dealing with predator cops. Would you uh, please put up badge 4163 for me, Ella? Oh, look at that. That's your district, Commander. Badge number 4163 is responding to, what, 30% of the burglaries in your district. I mean, this guy is fantastic. Do you have any idea who badge 4163 is? Barrett. Barrett. Officer Barrett. One of the gentlemen was dragged through the front doors this morning. Now, Barrett is first on the scene in burglaries in affluent neighborhoods. But the bad guys always seem to get away. The victims, however, reported missing some cash and some jewelry. Maybe it was the burglars. Yeah, well, didn't you find that strange? Did you investigate it? Did you happen to go to Ella and say, hey, Ella, put up the numbers for my district. I'd like to comp staff. No, sir. Barrett's a genius at burglaries and good at showing up at accidental death scenes. But we got a complaint. A family member said a heart attack victim had a Rolex watch stolen. Anyone could have taken that, ambulance attendants, guys in the morgue. Yeah. Did you investigate that? Did you say, isn't that strange? You see the numbers, Chief. I'm dealing with major crimes. I've got to prioritize. Commander Abbott has a high crime rate in his district. That leaves little time to profile cops based on some vague report that somebody makes about a property being missing. Commander, you drop the ball. You let a man under your command go out there and steal from the very citizens that we swore to protect. We lowered our recruiting standards three years ago. The result is men graduating from the academy who shouldn't be wearing the uniform. It is your job, Commander, if you have men under you that are not qualified for the position, you get rid of them. You identify the problem and you find a solution. You didn't do your job, Commander. I do the best I can with what I've got to work Well, your work best with. is not good enough. Commander Abbott has given 20 years of his life to this department. Sit down, Joe. He should not be embarrassed. Sit down, Joe. In front of men that he helped to train. You sit down. Men that he walked to meet with. Sit down. Embarrassed. We took an oath. We swore to uphold, protect, and serve. And you're defending the men that violated that oath? Commander Abbott, if you cannot do your job, then you should resign. Good morning. I made you some coffee. I didn't know how you took it, but I just sort of guessed. Here you go. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Congressman Reese has a meeting with some of his key contributors at 8, and I have to be there, so I kind of got to get going. You know, what are you doing working for a segregationist like Reese? <laughs> yeah, well, working for some loudmouth transit cop in Queens isn't exactly doing much for your interest. All right, all right. You know, let's stick to the pact, all right? Let's not mix business with pleasure, please. Okay. Mm. Come on, die, please. I'm running oh, very really? late. Oh, Gosh, you're so late. Very late. Thank you. The men are in a difficult position, so no one wants to support bad cops. But no one's ever going to be a tout. A what? A tout. A rat. The informant. I don't care if it's Sammy the Bull or Serpico, no one likes an informant. The job requires stopping crime. I agree. Look at Dawson. 
she'd have pulled out his gun, told Barrett to put the stuff back, or he'd arrest him. That's what I would have done. But look at Commander Ashton. No, no, no. Wait a second, Temple. Let me get this straight now. You're out in the street with Barrett. You see him stealing some stuff. Right. You tell him, you put that back or I'm going to arrest you. Is that... Yes. No, you arrest him anyway. Good cops stop crime. Now, I'm not going to have a crooked cop working for him. Good morning. Chief, I got a call from the duty officer about the overnight attendances. Ten senior officers out in the first district, ten in the second. The blue flu. Sick out. Do you know about this? Why didn't you tell me? You appointed me to catch crooks, not to carry rumors. It's that bad, huh? Stings, perp walk, it's manionitis. What about the beat cops and radio car assignments? Check on that when I get back to the office. Okay, I'm going to need to know what, what percentage of these guys affects deployment, all right? Morning. Morning. Sorry, I'm late. Must have been important. Looks like it was. Yes, they'll be shot. Well, I ran out of clean clothes. I need to do laundry. Come on. All right, Nikki, here's what we've got. Blue flu, police protest. I say we go to rule number one. Uh... Is rule number one something I should know about? If it's good news, you get it out quick. If it's bad news, you get it out even quicker. Look, I think the news may already be out. I got 27 messages on my page or six from the post. Yeah, get on with the state and the feds. Check out this Omega-7 group and any other Cuban extremist groups. What's up? Uh, state trooper stopped a car in the New Jersey Turnpike. Turns out it was a Cuban exile with a sniper rifle heading south. Mr. Mayor, our readers want to know about the pumpkin tape. It's your voice talking about money with the mystery woman you call pumpkin. You've never explained that. Okay, let me try. Yes, it is my voice. Yes, I use the words seven, ten, and the word pumpkin. And I'm heard speaking softly to a young woman. But Andrea, I could take this very interview Put the dialogue on a computer and have you saying, you want to kill me or kill your mother? <laughs> that tape is a collation of electronic excerpts from phone conversations over a period of months. Who would do that? Anyone with an agenda to embarrass this city and my administration. Which brings us to the subject of Fidel Castro's first visit to the district. He's bringing along a man the Cuban exile community contends murdered several of their people. The Metropolitan Police Department is prepared. Despite the current turmoil in the department, I'm talking about an unofficial strike. A sick out by senior officers. We've been informed this action is in progress. Andrea, I thought you were above rumor. If it's true, it would mean that this city is incapable of dealing with the potential violence. If it's true. Jack! What the hell is going on here? Forty percent of the city's senior officers and twenty-five percent of the patrolmen call in sick. And how do I find out about it? From a member of the press. We have a work stoppage in favor of some crooks. Now, if that's how the senior police officers on this force want to behave, I say we do without them. With Castro's visit, we've got all the potential for a major civil disturbance in our streets. We can handle Castro. How, Chief? How are you going to do it? What, what do you got, some kind of a magical formula? No, I've got some good men still out there. Let me make one thing clear. I have no intentions of going to the State Department and asking for their help and proving to the world that we're incapable of handling our end of this thing. You made me promises when you came here, Chief. You keep them. Chief, you're not going to be happy. I'll come back. No, no, no. You stay, dear. Nolan. How come Nolan isn't here? He... He's out. What? He called in sick. Oh, that's just great. Now the deputy chief has called in sick. In all fairness, maybe the man is sick. Hey, don't spend me, mister. So is this your way of calling in sick, Hoffman? Very funny. Not you as well, Hoff. Someone stole my uniform, shoes and all. Oh, come on, man. You gotta be kidding me. When did this happen? Just now, over on Euclid. I, I just picked it up from the dry cleaner. I ran in real quick to get a cup of coffee. I come back out, and it's gone. Yeah. Chief? No, Nancy, not now. Come. Sorry. I, no. I'm sorry. Come in. 
Can I get you some kava tea? What? It promotes calmness. Kava. They make a tea that uh, promotes integrity, honesty. They make that kind of tea? Chief. What? We got a problem. The patrol officer is reported his uniform stolen. Nancy, I'm gonna need a minute, please. A terrorist threat. Sniper with a rifle. Stolen uniform. All right, all right, all right, all right. I want all the officers on this Castro mobilization to be issued a special armband. Now, they're gonna have to show their ID, a photo ID, and their badge. So we don't know who's gonna call in sick. We don't know who's gonna turn up for the shift. It's going to be a difficult one to try, right. so... Ella? How's the attendance, Ella? It's down again. We're using overtime to fill the gaps. We can barely mobilize the 62 shift, and Commander Dodd asked for help policing the parking lot across the street from the hotel where Castro's gone to stay. People are already camping out. All right, put all the clerical and detectives in uniform, get them up on the streets. I said, we get the State Department in on it now, make like it was always a part of the plan. Look, if these pro and anti groups get together, there's got to be somebody there to pull them apart. No, we do it. Without help. Well, how? When? Why wait until a riot breaks out that we can't control? No. No State Department, Nikki. Now, you arrange a meeting with the leaders of both groups. I want to talk to them. All right, dose of reality, Chief. You don't have the men. Chief, look what they found in the alley behind the Drummond Hotel. Molotov cocktail. I thought I was the only one who came in here to hide. Uh, here's the deal. I got a thousand officers to cover 20 blocks. That's 50 a block. But I'm going to need 200 to isolate the protesters in the park across from the hotel. How would Julius Caesar or one of those other warriors you study handle this situation? Uh, are you familiar with the word decimate? No, it's not good. Well, it comes from the Roman legions when... They didn't fight well, or when they called in sick. Caesar would select the top 10% and have them slaughtered. Times have changed. Mm -hmm. You think DC's is put in that espresso machine? Yeah, I think so. Well, I could use a quart. How about you? No, Nancy, you gave me some of this tea. Yeah, the Hocus Pocus tea. But it's good. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is. You know, Temple was talking to me about a birthday party for Ricky. No, Chief. I can't think about parties. Ella, come on. Now, I want to organize it. He may be taken from me. I have to face that. And if he's going to go, got to be strong. So, no birthdays, no plans. Till I have them. No, 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 no. What? Enough coffee. Try some kava. Is it legal? Of course, sir. Tea might help, Chief, but I think you got to do more. Oh, I feel a Nancy moment coming up. You need to find ways to channel your anger to turn it into something positive. You're back from DC's already? Well, I surrendered to some of Nancy's tea, but. It comes with words of wisdom. Would you like to hear them? Sure. All right. Well, she, uh, she says I need to channel my anger into something positive. I agree. Oh, well. Good luck today. Thanks. Are you sure that uh, I can... Yes, I mean, I... I'm sure. You can't be there. Well, you're going to win anyway. How do you know that? Because God is good, Ella. I mean, this channeling my anger thing, where do, you, where do you think I should start? Where would Caesar start? Chief Mannion. Hey, Joe. Glad to see you're feeling better. Never been sick a day in my life.
Everybody else gone to work. Uh, you want something to drink? No, thank you. I'm not going to be here that long. like the fish. Yeah, I caught that off of Puerto Rico. My wife hates it. Says there's a planet where fish hang men like me up on the wall. Wouldn't that be something? Well, I should have fired you today, Joe. Yeah, but we both know you're too smart for that. What surprises me? Is that how you could side with a bunch of crooked cops? Oh, come on. It's not about siding with crooked cops. It's about humiliating good ones. It's about tarnishing the image of a police force that I have worked with for over 30 years. But we got mechanisms for punishing bad cops without embarrassing the whole force. I watch police chiefs smile at congressmen and senators who thought the streets we patrol were little more than a shanty town for their servants. I've watched mayors come in and cavort with their lackeys and whores while good, decent people hid in their houses and awaited. Because I knew someday I'd have a chance to make things decent again. And I'm still waiting. Mm -hmm. While you're waiting, some decent folk may get killed. We have a protest with a terrorist threat. I don't want to call in the feds to police our beat. So I call the Comstat for all senior officers, and I expect you to be there. If not, then I expect to see your badge in the mail. Say. You were speeding. What, they hire a private detective to come and tell me this? Here's your photo from the speed trap camera on East Capitol. God, I look awful. What, how did you get a hold of this? Release the cameras to the city and get 25% of each fine. Is, is, is there a point to all of this? Here's the point. I don't believe it. This is pumpkin, this has to be. Do you know who this is? You run those plate numbers and I'm sure you'll find out. Oh, my God. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Chief, we've got to talk. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, there can't be any compromises. The officers on this police force have got to know what's expected of them without exception. Jack. We've got two groups of protesters ready to kill each other. A missing police uniform and a potential for a sniper who may be dressed as a cop and you don't even know how many cops we can put on the street. Now, I'm the last one in the world to want to call the feds in on this, but if I have to, then no. I will... We police the city. We'll feel the force. Then give me a plan and a roster by 12 noon tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, Officer Boyle, Jack Manning. Yes, Sergeant Connie, Jack Manning. Yes, hi, I'm looking for Captain Jason. Yeah, Captain Clayton, Jack Manning. We're here to discuss what's best for Ricky. I will not permit any discussion of external factors. I am fully aware of the legal situation regarding your brother, Mrs. Coleman. Let's begin. Give us a little background on yourself. Well, I'm a former nanny, caregiver. I gave up the job six years ago to devote myself to my children. My husband has a thriving roofing business. We have a large home in Jupiter, Florida, and three wonderful children. Your children know Ricky? Yes, they do. Um, he visited many times until, until he was stopped. Your children, 
They do well at school. They're at the top of their classes. I have two boys Ricky's age. They love him very much. So, yeah, we got video surveillance from the parking lot of the guy stealing the police uniform. We got this image. Any leads? Just a t-shirt. I had it blown up as best I could. It says Ratzel. We check names, companies, radical organizations, nothing. Okay, run it on the net, see if you get any hits. Check with state and uh, anti-Castro activists with that name and circulate the photos. Yes, sir. Fellow citizens, our city's fathers have finally gone nuts. Now we're protecting, encouraging, sheltering students for Fidel. Let me say that again. We are sponsoring Fidel Castro supporters. I say get them out of here. Send them to Cuba. You live alone? Not anymore. Yes. And you, your work hours? Uh, eight to five. Overtime? Sometimes. Last week? Well, last week was a special week. And what was special? Well, two days I worked till eight, and one day till two a.m. An infrequent occurrence. If I may, just for clarity, how about this week? This week there was uh, a bit of an emergency, but it's not something that happens often. But certainly nothing you can guarantee. No. You may continue. Your Honor, we all know that children are a handful for anyone. My job is tough. But it's not a disability or a handicap. It's part of who I am. It enriches my life so that I can be a better parent to Ricky. It shouldn't determine whether I'm able to give love to a child. If you're saying a child should have two parents, it'd be nice. But the harsh reality is something that I see every day in my job. Even two parents raise children who learn to hate, who steal, who shoot their classmates because they don't get the love and attention they deserve at home. Children from two-parent families, they can be abused, become alcoholics, junkies, criminals. It's the character and morals of the person, the self-worth of that individual that should determine what kind of parent they are. I get that from my job. I shouldn't be penalized for being a working single mother. I tell you this, you take that child away from me, he'll break his heart a second time. Objection. Guess what I heard? Some noble cops don't want to become Fidel's bodyguard. There's a strike against the police chief, our own Jack Mannion. Let's all strike. Close up the town, stop the chief, stop the communist dictator and his new police chief, El Manino. Back here you go. Nikki, you're here early. God, I'm late one day because of the stupid subway system in this town. You, know, you get these metro cards, you don't put enough money on them, you get stuck on the station. No, oh, wait a minute now. You're taking the metro? That's mm -hmm. an idea. I never thought of that. So, what train do you take? Mm -hmm. Here's some coffee. Uh, one minute. Hey, what happened? <sighs> My lawyer says we'll more than likely know on Monday. Monday? What's the hold? They say it's a complicated case. At least I'll um, have him with me on his birthday. I think you're going to have him with you for every birthday. Thanks. So how are we with the manpower? Did you talk to Nolan? I talked to Nolan. And I ordered him and the other officers to show up for Comstock. This is the softer, gentler Mannion. What time did you order him in? Ten. And then what? Well, I don't know. I'm going to tell uh, I'm going to tell the men how good I think they are, and that I need them out there on the street, protecting Fidel, Nikki's buddy. How is he my buddy? Oh, come on, Nikki! All you New York Times guys, you love Fidel. I mean, the Che Guevara posters, the Cuban cigars. Come on, Nikki! You love Fidel. Mm -hmm. Never sick out on Fidel's watch. You're going to explain how. I'm going to go for a walk.
can't believe I've never been to the police memorial, Chief. Ah, here it is. What, Chief? Brad Bradigan. Like Brad. You know him? Yeah, I know. I could tell his wife had been murdered. So, we got Ratzel, the guy who stole the police uniform. You should come and meet him. Was he armed? He was, sorry. He had six key lime pies. What? He's a clown. What do you mean he's a clown? Don't call him that. Call him Ratso. He's famous. 410 items on the web. Do you remember the talking cigar outside the impeachment hearings? Ratso. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> you uh, heard about the time I bolted myself to the door of the Defense Department? No, oh, what for? Well, I was dressed as a $500 toilet seat. <laughs> when I send my message, people pay attention. What were you going to do with a police uniform? Uh, I was going to have a little fun. What sort of fun? Ridicule. Castro's too uptight. I was going to you know, help him loosen up a little. Give him a pie right in the face. <laughs> You, uh, hear about the cigar? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about the cigar. <laughs> uh, so you work alone? I have one rule. Never share the spotlight. Right. You do know that you're under arrest, don't you? Professional hazard. However, the officer's car was unlocked. That rules out breaking and entering. Your parents must be very proud. Thank you. So I took a walk, and I ran into an old friend. His name is Brad Bradigan, Big Brad. I knew him uh, when he was a cop in Brooklyn. And Brad is this huge guy. He's built like a grizzly bear, but he's got a heart like a teddy bear. And we always used to send him out on a family dispute because he's so intimidating. So one night I sent him out to... Uh, and a pretty bad one. Husband and wife, they're arguing, and kids are screaming in the background. You hear it over the 911 call. And Brad puts himself between the husband and the wife, and husband trips him. And Brad falls into a mirror, and the mirror shatters, and the husband takes a piece of glass, and he stabs Brad in the throat. And his partner is slipping into blood as he's trying to drag him for some safety. So, I went and told Brad's wife that her husband had been killed. And I wanted to reconnect with that memory, so I went to the wall, the police memorial, where there's 14,500 names of other officers from all over the United States that had given their lives. I had seen something that, that made me mad, and it was this. man had 
remain the memory of my friend, Brad Bradigan, the other names on that wall. You can mean the memory of what Temple Page did at John Jay High School and the other officers that went in to save him. See, I have zero tolerance for corruption. Policing has always been my life. Police officers like you, police officers like, like Temple, police officers like Brown, have always been my heroes. Some of you have, are my friends. And I will let nothing tarnish that image. There's an inscription on the wall as you leave the memorial. It says, it's not how they died that made them heroes. It's how they lived. Now tomorrow, we have an obligation to protect this city. And I expect to see you all at your posts. Ella, would you put up the battle plans for Operation Big Cigar? This is P.J. Hawks, your voice for a free D.C., free from communists and dictators. The strike is on. Let's get rid of them all. Jack Mannion, set us free. Resign now. I am P.J. Hawks, the voice of D.C. Libra. The Metropolitan Police Force was in overwhelming presence this morning as Fidel Castro arrived in the district. Castro was welcomed by local dignitaries while outside protesters gathered without incident. Oh. We will continue to update you. Come on, Ellen. Oh, I got it. Come on. Come on. Oh, I can't even. Hey, what? What? What is it? The judge ruled. You won. <laughs> Ricky stays here! Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Oh. Oh. Congratulations. Chief, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I meant no disrespect at all the other morning. Oh, I understand. I, I expect nothing but complete honesty from my detectives. Yes, I appreciate that, sir. Congratulations. You deserve it. Hey, look what I got! <laughs> well, I got you one, too. This is the Biography Channel. You want to be yourself, but you're not allowed to be yourself. This is the Biography Channel. I was just beside myself with anger and disappointment. This is the Biography Channel. I'm the only actress he knows you have to pay to keep your clothes on. Reality meets personality only on the Biography Channel. Biography Channel. What a concept! Previously on the district. The only reason that I'm here at all is because I wanted to be with you. Mr. Mayor, who's Pumpkin? Who's that on the tape? The tape is a fraud. What the hell is Pumpkin? Does that sound like me? Yes, it does sound like you on the tape. That's the problem. I'm Irma Coleman, Pablito's sister. I have custody. You have temporary custody. You're his aunt, I'm his aunt. You don't have a greater right than I. It's a subpoena to appear before the adoption board. Ella, where are you? Ask him for a delay. Well, this is exactly what we're talking about. Your inability to parent this child. I can't blow this one, Chief. No, that's not gonna happen, Ella. Come on, Officer Dawson, what's the problem? There's somebody in my apartment. One B. First door on the left. All right, ma'am, just stay here. Stay calm. Stay calm, man. Stay calm. 
take the kitchen, I'll take a look. you playing the blind woman yeah oh well, turn it off that's enough i should have been in on this why is that as head of internal affairs i should have been involved it's my turf yeah six weeks ago i wanted a plan from you what did i get i get a memo back about proper procedure it takes time sir is that the best you can do captain eight sting operations were conducted in the last four days we have evidence of misconduct by four officers sent to the crime scenes Everything from burglary to obstruction of justice. Now, these operations have bigger implications than just busting several cops. Cops? You calling these guys cops? They're robbing a blind woman. I mean, they're nothing but thugs. Now, I want them arrested. You bring them in the front door of this building. I want them interrogated like any other perp. Do you have that, Captain? Yes, sir. You gotta calm down, Chief. Like somebody robbed his granny. How'd you know? Know what? Mounted a sting for crooked cops. What, robbing grannies? Almost. Anybody fall for it? Too many. Anybody from this district? Barrett, Dawson, Baldwin, and Sandelson. Dawson? Yeah. Ella, your lawyer called. The adoption board's rescheduled your hearing for the end of this week. Thought I'd get to his birthday before that happened. Ella, come on. You can't lose. They're not going to hand the child over to the family of his mother's murderer. It's not going to happen. Really? I keep thinking about a certain famous football player's case. Hey, Ella, I was going to ask you, um, is Ricky into superheroes? What? I want to hook him up with a birthday present. Oh, uh, yes. Spider-Man, I think. Right. Where they have these claymation action figures, right, where you can mold them and then you can break them no. apart. No clay in my apartment. This guy obviously does not have children. No, no, you just put paper down on the floor. I read it's good to give kids cross-gender toys. What, like a doll or something? Yeah, what would be wrong with that? For a little guy, a doll. You are so homophobic. You what? know that, McGregor? Look, you're such a... Look! He may be gone by Saturday. I don't want to hear any more about his birthday until I know he's mine. No comments. This way. I think it's a good idea to humiliate cops. They're not cops, Joe. They're criminals. 
They stopped being cops the moment they committed a crime. What about the cameras? Now, you see me out there taking any bows? Now, this is not a proud moment. No, but by doing this, you paint this entire department with the same brush. You barely had a good word to say about this force since the first day you came here. Then it's your job, Deputy Chief, to give me something good to say. Instead of trying to make a point on, on behalf of a bunch of thieves. Sir? Yeah, I thought I told you to arrest everyone. Where's Dawson? Dawson? Look, I saw that tape. He objected to the theft. Really? He reported? No. He's a good cop. He was there as backup. Dawson saw Barrett committing a crime. He said nothing. That's not a good cop. Hell, that's not even a good citizen. How do we know he didn't divide the take when he got outside? Now, Joe, Dawson took the same oath we all did to faithfully discharge the duties of this office. That makes him a liar and a crook. Lock him up. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. There will be no more perp walks. I will arrest Dawson myself. Either we install soundproofing or you're going to have to control your temper. Hello. We are talking about crooked cops, the lowest of the low. You're not talking, you're shouting. It's safe to come in? Well, you're in. Hello, let's do a comp stab with the commanders. So, you in the mood for some bad news? Absolutely. Fidel Castro. Fidel does not want to stay within the federal circle. Fidel wants to be among the people. The Drummond Hotel. Which puts him in your jurisdiction. Good for him. All right, we'll double the manpower, make it safe for him. Except he's bringing with him a certain Admiral Zadillo, the Cuban Navy. Now, it turns out Zadillo's the guy who ordered his ships to fire on the Cuban exile rescue flotilla. According to the Miami Herald, the Cuban exile community is not too happy. They're organizing a massive protest. It's our beat, Chief. The mayor would like us to handle this without any federal assistance. Shall we have a police force that can deal with anything that's thrown at it? We'll deal with it. It could get violent. We're on it. Great. Long live Fidel. At least until he gets out of our town. <laughs> oh, um, the Temple School rescue, the mayor would like to do something. I'm going to make Temple a detective. Hey! How about a ceremony with the mayor, a little press? No, I don't think he'd like that. It's not his style. All right, but, you know, it might help level things out after this little parade this morning. All right, wait a minute. You think there's a disgrace in arresting crooked cops? You're shouting again. Officer Dawson. What's up, Chief? I'll need you to turn over your service weapon. What? Your ID, badge, and your shield. Wait a minute. You, you arresting me? If you have keys to a vehicle or a locker, I'll take those now, too. Come on, Chief. I didn't take anything. Officers will be stopping by your home to get your other weapons and any property belonging to the Metropolitan Police Department. I don't believe this. Here you go. I'm going to need to cuff you now. So now you're doing Mangan's dirty work for him, huh? morning six police officers six of our fellow officers were arrested and charged with burglary now i believe that we have a system in place where that could have been identified and it could have been stopped and until it is all of our good work goes for naught because we are dealing with predator cops would you uh please put up badge 4163 for me Ella? Oh, look at that. That's your district, Commander. Badge number 4163 is responding to, what, 
of the burglaries in your district. I mean, this guy is fantastic. Do you have any idea who badge 4163 is? Barrett. Barrett. Officer Barrett. One of the gentlemen was dragged through the front doors this morning. Now, Barrett is first on the scene in burglaries in affluent neighborhoods. But the bad guys always seem to get away. The victims, however, reported missing some cash and some jewelry. Maybe it was the burglars. Yeah, well, didn't you find that strange? Did you investigate it? Did you happen to go to Ella and say, hey, Ella, put up the numbers for my district. I'd like to comp staff. No, sir. Barrett's a genius at burglars and good at showing up at accidental death scenes. But we got a complaint. A family member said a heart attack victim had a Rolex watch stolen. Anyone could have taken that. Ambulance attendants, guys in the morgue. Yeah. Did you investigate that? Did you say, isn't that strange? You see the numbers, Chief. I'm dealing with major crimes. I've got to prioritize. Commander Abbott has a high crime rate in his district. It leaves little time to profile cops based on some vague report that somebody makes about a property being missing. Commander, you dropped the ball. You let a man under your command go out there and steal from the very citizens that we swore to protect. We lowered our recruiting standards three years ago. The result is men graduating from the academy who shouldn't be wearing the uniform. It is your job, Commander, if you have men under you that are not qualified for the position, you get rid of them. You identify the problem and you find a solution. You didn't do your job, Commander. I do the best I can with what I have got to work Well, your work best with. is not good enough. Commander Abbott has given 20 years of his life to this department. Sit down, Joe. He should not be embarrassed. Sit down, Joe. In front of men that he helped to train. You sit down. Men that he walked to meet with. Sit down. Embarrassed. We took.